First, you pass through a dense forest and come to a river shore. The town is on the other side. You can't cross the river because of the strong current. Besides, you don't know how deep it is. You see a ruined bridge on your left. There's an old boat on your right, but it's unlikely to help. What will you do? You can't go back. Look, there's a hatch in the grass. It seems to be an underground tunnel passing through the river. You open the hatch and go down. It's dark, quiet, and cold here. You turn on the flashlight and see an empty bottle and a basketball on the ground. You direct the light further and see... Wow! It's a creepy girl with long black hair. She's just staring at you, saying nothing. You're scared, but you're not gonna run. This girl is not real. But how did you know that? The basketball with the bottle casts shadows, but the girl doesn't. She's just a dark memory from your past. You rub your eyes and the girl disappears. You go through an underground tunnel and climb up. Great, you made it into town. You walk down the street and notice that all the people are looking at you. Why do you seem suspicious to them? You've just come out of an underground tunnel. Your clothes and face are pretty dirty, so you're gonna stand out a bit. Everything is fine. You continue your mission. According to the map, you have to pass two more blocks to get to the building. Many people are rushing to work. You see a diner on the corner, a library, a school. Here's a big supermarket. But something is wrong here. Can you tell what it is? There are no cars on the roads. You're approaching the skyscraper. You try to open the door, but it's closed. Take a look around and decide how to get inside. You have three options. A fire escape, a hatch, and find out yourself. The fire escape leads to the window of the second floor, but a guard is standing there. You can use the hatch, but see the steam coming out of it? It's boiling inside. So what about a tire iron? You can use it to break the lock. You're inside. It's very dark here. You turn on the flashlight, but it breaks down. What will you do to light your way? A flame from your lighter isn't enough. Look at the windows. They're all covered with curtains. Just pull them aside and let the light in. Great. You walk through the spacious hall and hear the flapping of wings. You're looking up. Oh no. Hundreds of bats are flying towards you. You need to hide as fast as possible. There are three elevators ahead. Which one will you choose? The first elevator is on the 25th floor. It will take too long to get down here. The number zero is above the second elevator. The third elevator doesn't show any numbers, so it doesn't work. So, the second elevator it is. You press the button of the second elevator and quickly go inside. You push 60 and lift up. The elevator gets stuck on the 35th floor. The lights turn off. You open the hatch and climb onto the roof. You see two other elevators coming up to you from below. Which one will you jump in? There's a fire in the first elevator. The second one fills with water. What will you choose to survive? You jump into the second elevator. The water rises higher and higher, but the doors open and all the water pours out. You're on the 40th floor. It seems that using elevators is a bad idea. So you decide to climb 20 floors by stairs. You run five floors and smash against the wall made of hardened sand. What will you do? You can't use the elevator. How to get through the obstacle? See the flashing fire safety sensor? Use your lighter to activate it. 
It's done. The water is splashing out of the ceiling and flooding all floors. It moistens the sand. The wall turns into dirt and melts. Regina and Claire went to a shopping mall on the weekend to buy some clothes. Regina saw an escalator going down with a big banner that said, Huge sale! Everything 99% off! Of course, they hurried there. Who wouldn't? But as soon as they headed there, everything faded out. The mall and the part of the escalator behind them vanished. It got all dark, and they had no other option but to go where the escalator would take them. They arrived at a place where they couldn't see anything. Regina yelled for help. Suddenly, three signs appeared in front of them. The first one said, This leads to a sea filled with flesh-eating mutant sharks. The second went, This leads to a forest with brain-sucking zombie mosquitoes. And the third one said, This leads to a cave covered with sharp rocks and bats with giant claws. Which one should they choose? Well, bats are harmless until provoked, whether they have small or big claws. So they should choose the third one. And as for the sharp rocks, they just need to watch their steps. They started walking in the direction of the cave, when suddenly a peculiar tiny monster cut their way. Welcome to the underworld, home of all monsters. We hope you enjoy your stay. Even if you don't, you can't ever leave here anyway. And it vanished out of sight. That's when a scary-looking city started to appear around them. What does it mean that we can't leave? Claire asked. There must be someone who can help us, Regina replied. Psst, over here. A creepy monster said from the corner of the street. Crack my riddle and I'll tell you who can help you. What goes around the house and into the house without ever touching the house? It's the sun! So, if you want to see it again, go to the restaurant called Cantina Hella and find the only human there. He might help you. And the monster left. Regina and Claire found it, but a bodyguard stopped them at the entrance. Password? We don't have it, Regina said. The bodyguard handed them a piece of paper with these numbers on it. The number that comes next is the password. Can you figure it out? Every next number is made by moving the first digit of the previous one to the end. So, the password is 1,793. Regina and Claire walked in. The place was super crowded, with human-looking monsters everywhere. It seemed impossible to spot the only real human in there. Can you see him? Well, the others may look human, but if you take a closer look, you can see their tails, fangs, horns, and all that. But this guy here doesn't have any of that, so he must be who they're looking for. Regina and Claire approached the man. His name was Eddie. They told him all about what they'd been through. He said, I know how you can get back. I do travel to Earth and back here all the time. I'll help you. Meet me here in an hour. Then he gave them his card and left. On it, there was strange writing. Can you decipher it? You need to replace all the letters with the previous letter that comes before them in the alphabet. So, it says police station. Regina and Claire got hungry. So they decided to order something to eat. The waiter brought them three different desserts. Which one should they choose? Did you notice that the eyes on the first one are actually blinking? 
eh, I wouldn't eat that. And the teeth inside the second one are real. Well, that's creepy. But the worms inside the third one are just gummy worms. And what looks like dirt is actually chocolate crumble. So they should definitely eat this one. After eating, they headed to the police station to find Eddie. When they arrived, they saw Eddie was really panicked. I'm a monster hunter, like a detective of the underworld. And I caught this extremely dangerous monster called Winona. But she escaped from her prison cell. I don't know how. But Claire immediately figured out how she escaped. Can you? Look at the poster on the wall. It's moving slightly. There must be an airflow behind it that is coming from a tunnel. Suddenly, a guardian rushed next to them and said, Sir, someone claimed they spotted Winona at the gym. Everyone rushed there. The receptionist silently pointed them in the direction of the changing cabins. They saw the feet of three different monsters in three different changing rooms. One of them was Winona. Can you tell which one? Do you remember what the other prisoners were all wearing? The monster in the third cabin is wearing the same thing, so she must be Winona. Eddie kicked the door of the third cabin, and there she was. Yet Winona looked extremely calm for a monster who was about to go back to jail. <laughs> Not so fast, she said, and created four clones of herself. Now, there were five Winonas in front of them. I will give you a hint about who the real me is and let you take me back to jail only if you agree to place me in the most luxurious cell. All the Winonas said at the same time. Eddie had no choice but to accept. The first and fourth clones said that number five was the real Winona. The second and the third clones said that number one was the real Winona. And the fifth clone said that number two was the real Winona. Only one of these statements was true, and the other four were lies. So can you tell which clone is actually the real one? If only one of them told the truth, then neither the first nor the fifth clone could be the real Winona, since that would mean two clones told the truth. Nor could the real Winona be the third or the fourth clone, since that would mean no one told the truth. So the only way one of them told the truth is if the second clone is the real Winona. After Eddie placed Winona in her new luxury cell, it was time to help Regina and Claire get back home. He took them to a place called the Hound Tattoo Studio and explained that the only way they could go back home was to get a key-shaped tattoo, which would open a portal to Earth. The tattoo artist showed them his key symbols catalog and said each different key shape opened a portal to another land. And they needed to pick the one that would open a portal to Earth. Because if they can't, nobody knows where they travel. Can you help them? Remember, Eddie told them that he travels to the Earth all the time. Then he must have the Earth portal key tattoo as well. Now, let's take a closer look at all his tattoos. Here is the key-shaped one, and this key on the catalog is the same. So it must be the one that will help them go back home. After their tattoos were complete, Eddie activated their magic to send them home. Regina and Claire felt dizzy, as if falling through a rabbit hole. Then, suddenly, they woke up in their bedrooms at home. Wait, none of that was real? How do you think they can tell if this was all a dream or not? Simple. They should just check if they really have tattoos now. 
Yup, there they are. They definitely didn't have them when they were at the mall. Well, that was weird. Okay, bad news. You got taken. No time to explain. Let's just get out of here. So you find yourself in a dark cell with a dirt floor and a small window at twice your height. There's no food or water, but there's a shovel. Why did they leave the shovel? Don't ask me, I don't know. Just be happy you have it. <laughs> However, you can't dig your way out because the walls go a long way underground. So how do you get out? You can still dig and make a high dirt pile that will make you reach the window and get out of there. So you do just that and find yourself in a dark corridor. You have nothing to do but to go straight, hoping that sooner or later you'll find the exit and get out of this creepy place. Half an hour later, you approach a metal door. You have to enter the passcode, but here's a hint. Berlin, 600. Paris, 400. London, 600. Rome, 200. Toronto, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives 200 points, while each vowel takes away 100 points. In the word Toronto, there are four consonants that give 800 together. Three vowels take away 300 points. So the passcode is 500. The door clicks and you leave another obstacle behind. Soon, you approach three more doors. Behind the first one, there's an iron block with a movement sensor that will crush everyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's an electric shocker that never misses. Behind the third door, there's broken glass all over the floor. Which way do you choose? You pick the third door, obviously. You're wearing some boots, right? So walking on the glass is definitely not going to be too hard of a task. You follow the tunnel till you reach the next room. As you step in there, a metal cage falls down from the ceiling and traps you inside. However, there are three buttons there. The red button will open the cage, but it'll also open a door with a hungry lion. The blue button will fill the cage with water for 10 minutes, and only then will it open the door. However, keep in mind that people can only live 7 minutes without oxygen. The green button will set the room on fire, but will open the cage door in 5 minutes. Which one do you choose? You should choose the blue button. The water won't be able to fill the cage because it will just splash outside. You'll only have to wait 10 minutes until the door opens, and you'll be able to get out safely. You turn right and immediately bump into a huge guard. Your heart skips a beat and you get paralyzed with fear. To your surprise, the guard looks down at you and asks, Wanna pass? Speechless, you just nod. Okay. You see, no one here wants to play riddles with me. If you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go and won't tell anyone I've seen you. Deal? You nod again, and here comes your riddle. What is that invention that lets you see right through walls? That's a window, of course. The guard smiles and says, Beware of the vampires. Then he moves aside, letting you go. Wow, that was close. And vampires? This gives you chills. But you have to keep moving and get out. And again, another door that requires a passcode. Can you crack it? There's a hint again. You should continue the sequence. O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E-N-T. Each of these letters is the first letter of the numbers. O for 1, T for 2, T for 3, then 4, 5, and so on. The last stands for 10, so the next four are E, T, T, F. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yep, that's correct. The door clicks open. Move! 
you get into a huge dark room. All the light comes from the candles the room is filled with. The problem is that there are four ways, and again, you don't know which one to take. Suddenly, each of the doors opens and four people walk into the room. There are two men, one woman, and one teenage girl. They all say they're prisoners too, and the other three are vampires. Who do you trust? You should trust the second man. He's the only one who casts a shadow from the light of the candles. The other three don't, so they must be vampires. So you rush to the man and you shut the door behind yourself. It'll probably slow them down for a while. As you're running, the man tells you he's been here for at least three days. The next obstacle is something he couldn't solve by himself, so he couldn't get out. There's just one try, and if you fail, the exit gets blocked for 24 hours. Finally, you come across another door with a robot guarding it. To let you go, the robot needs you to say the password. The tricky thing is that the password is different each time. The man said that as he was hiding in the room, he saw the vampires passing it twice. The first time, the robot said 12, and the vampire said 6. The other time, the robot said 6, and the vampire said 3. When the man approached the robot the last time, the robot said 8. The man replied 4, but the robot didn't let him in. The door got blocked, so it wasn't the right answer. You nod and approach the robot. The robot says 4. What is your answer? The answer is 4. The rule isn't dividing the number by 2, but saying the number of letters in the word. Your answer is accepted. The robot opens the door and lets you go. Again, another dark room. But as you step into it, you get surrounded by eight hungry dogs. In the middle, there's a meat cake standing so high on the table that the dogs can't reach it. To calm them down and make them your friends before they make you their dinner, you have to feed them the cake. But here's a tricky thing. The knife is magical and can only make three cuts. After three cuts, it disappears. Your task is to divide the cake into eight equal pieces with these three cuts. How can you manage that? With one cut, you cut the cake in half and get two pieces. Then you make another perpendicular cut and get four pieces. With your last move, you have to cut the cake in the middle horizontally splitting each of the four pieces into two at once. Eh, great job! Now, give each of the dogs a piece of cake and get out of there immediately. You rush to the door and lock it behind yourselves. You're in a tunnel again, and this time there's no light at all. You move in complete darkness, putting your hand to the wall so that you know where to go. You walk like that for at least half an hour when, finally, you see some light. You run towards it and come across another massive door that requires a passcode. Luckily, there's a hint again, but there will be two questions appearing one by one. To get the passcode, you have to solve both of them and put the answers together. Ready? How many months have 28 days? All 12 of them, obviously. Okay, next one. Here's the sequence of letters. S, M, H, D, W. What are the other two letters? S stands for seconds, M for minutes, H for hours, D is for days, W is for weeks. So the next letters are M for months and Y for years. And the full passcode is 12MW. The door clicks and you're outside. Finally! There's actual air and sun. But before you start thinking about what happened and what to do next, a police officer comes up to you. With him, there are two ladies wearing paper bags over their heads. Sir, are you Mr. Jones? The police officer asks. 
You reply, that's you exactly. However, the police officer looks suspicious. Well, we can't know for sure that you're not one of these criminals pretending to be someone else, so we have to test you. One of these ladies is your bride. Tell us which one it is. And now, you finally remember what happened. It was your wedding morning. You were about to get married, and then you found yourself in that dungeon. Well, the problem is that you haven't seen your wife-to-be wedding dress yet, so you can't even tell which one is the right one. Is there any other way to tell? Think carefully. With their faces covered, these girls are absolutely identical. You didn't need much time. You notice that one of the girls is wearing a wedding ring already. However, you and your bride aren't married yet, so she's not supposed to have one. And the one who doesn't have it is yours. Congratulations! The girl removes the bag, and you see that it's really her. Right behind you, the door opens, and the vampires walk out. You're about to start screaming, but they take off their wigs, and they turn out to be your friends. So, was it all a prank? Well, yeah, it was. But don't be mad. You had fun, right? Well, most of the time. Hey, my talented bright side detectives. Today, I have something exciting for you. It'll let your brain do a little workout and have fun at the same time. Let's start, shall we? Yeah. Look at this picture very attentively. Can you spot a fake princess? There's a price tag on this princess's tiara, so this girl is most likely not a member of the royalty. There are a lot of delicious products in this picture, but you'll never be able to cheer one of them up. Which one is it? A blueberry, because it's always blue. The next task is pretty tricky. You need to connect all the dots with just four straight lines. Let's see how you deal with this challenge. That's how you do it. Easy peasy. Just kidding, I actually failed this task. Now, can you make four out of these three sticks without breaking them? Yeah, you can. That's how it can be done. This is what I call creative thinking. Can you figure out what's wrong with this picture? This dice is all wrong. It has seven dots on one of its sides, but it's impossible. The largest number of dots is six. Look at this image. What word do you see there? A pot, the at sign, aka aspirant, and a toe. Right, that's potato. The next one, a surfer and a spider web. What could it mean? If you figured out that this puzzle means surf the web, you're very smart. The next tricky riddle for you. You need to guess the brand hidden here. Look at the image attentively. Every small detail counts. The brand hiding here is Pringles. See? P ring goals. Clever, huh? The next task for you. Guess the food hidden in this puzzle. A small hint, you can grow this product.
call I flower. That must be cauliflower. Look at these emojis and guess the word. It's colorful and often appears after the rain. Yep, we're talking about a rainbow here. Okay, now look at this t-shirt. And try to count how many holes it has. Keep in mind that this riddle may be a bit trickier than you think. I hope you didn't only count those nasty ripped holes because those aren't the only ones this t-shirt has. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those holes are indeed ripped and eight. Did you get it right? Another tricky puzzle for you. How many watermelons are here? There are five watermelons. Look how it works. Nice, right? It's time to put your attention skills to the test. Can you find the odd unicorn here? It's this one. The orange patch of its mane is missing stars. Look at these guys. Can you figure out who's living alone? The man on the right has two toothbrushes, so he's probably living with someone else. The man on the left, on the other hand, seems to be living on his own. How can you move just one match to make this equation correct? There are actually three ways to solve this puzzle. Either you make it look this way, or it can be 8 minus 3 equals 5. Or you can remove this match and get this. Now this is truly puzzling. 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals a triangle. What does it mean? And how is it possible? The answer lies in the shape of these numbers. 2 and 2 turned this way indeed looks like a fish. 3 and 3 create a pretty 8. And 7 and 7 do look like a triangle, right? Use just 3 of these balls to get 30. A tiny hint, you may need to think outside the box and get creative. Just rotate this 9 and you'll get 6. And then 13 plus 11 plus 6 is indeed 30. Look at these people attentively. One of them sneaked out of the house some time ago and has just returned. Now they're pretending to be sleeping, but we know better, right? So who's the rule breaker? It's this girl with red hair. She's still wearing her shoes and they look wet. Maybe it's raining outside. Now this picture has lots of tiny details and it's gonna be challenging to find the odd Grinch here. Can you do it? It's this one. Look, he's missing his fluffy headphones. And now, how about we train your detective skills? Larry's granddad was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, five years later, Larry was looking through some old papers. Yahoo! 
Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his granddad's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 2 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree, right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Larry was going to be rich. He drove to his granddad's villa and found the cherry tree. He waited for an hour till 2 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since the granddad hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller and its shadow has become longer too. James disappeared after going hiking with his friend Matthew. In a couple of days, the police found Matthew tottering along the highway. When they picked the man up, he told the officers James had gotten into a swamp and hadn't managed to get out. Unfortunately, Matthew could do nothing to save him. After listening to the man's story, the police officers arrested him. Why? Just look at this guy, in a white t-shirt, cleanly shaven? How is it possible after several days in the forest? A man living in a small village in the mountains got his goat stolen. Uh -oh. He was sure one of his neighbors was behind this crime. The head of the village invited four suspects and said, I'm going to give each of you a magic trick. Bring them to me in the morning. By that time, the thief's stick will have grown by five inches. The next day, the head of the village examined the suspect's sticks. He immediately knew who had taken the goat. How? The thief's stick was five inches shorter than those of the rest. He had broken it, expecting it to grow longer during the night. Two best friends, Jack and Tyler, went to a tropical island to surf and have some rest. After an active day at the sea, they bought a large watermelon and ate it. In an hour or so, Tyler felt unwell and lost consciousness. Luckily, he was taken to a hospital in time. The doctors managed to save his life. But both guys ate the same watermelon. Tyler didn't have any kind of allergy. Then how come Jack was perfectly fine? Jack didn't eat watermelon seeds, and Tyler did. Whatever substance poisoned him was in the seeds. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One is a mile away from his house, and the other is two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop, and in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill, and this method allows the guy to ride his bike downhill without any effort. An inventor created a time machine. He packed enough food, water, and other necessities and was ready to test his invention. He set the timer to go 500 years back into the past. He was about to press the start uh -oh. button when a thought came to his mind. He took the time machine and his supplies and went downstairs. Why? This way, he'll avoid a nasty fall. Multi-story buildings weren't common five centuries ago, 